Yes, if only this person got explicit permission to use this picture, he'd have no problems. <laughs> so finally, some feature threats. Contactless IC cards, or smart cards, as you American folk know them, um, are being put into everything possible in Japan. Um, all the new driver's licenses, credit cards, train passes, you know, whatever. Uh, there are still no public vulnerabilities yet. However, rumor has it that the encryption was intentionally made weak for fast authentication. Uh, this is because Japanese people are always in a hurry and they don't want to place their IC card over the sensor for more than, you know, 100 milliseconds before the gates open and let them into the train station. Um, Sony's Felica, by far the biggest player of IC cards, uh, is also rumored to have vulnerabilities, but everything is being kept hush-hush for now. So, for the country with the most widely deployed uh, cell phone infrastructure in the world, I'm slightly surprised that there is still no malware for cell phones in Japan. Um, this could be partly because Japanese cell phones don't run Symbian, like 80% of the world. They originally all ran Tron. Um, today, most are running Linux or window Windows Mobile. Um, my theory of why there's still no malware is that the mobile virus writers uh, don't read Japanese, and the people who read Japanese don't write malware. Uh, sorry, can you hold on for the end? Who could do what? Just like the, the Russian mob could probably take down large chunks of the internet, but they make entirely too much money off of it being up to, to screw with it or to let other people screw with it. it. The criminals are making money on the internet. They want it up. They will keep it up better than the cops. Yeah. As long as they make money on it. Um, okay. I'm, I'm still not quite sure exactly what you're we're getting at. Um, It. Okay, um, I don't think... Or cell phones as well. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's a good point. I, di I didn't think about that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, the, some, some things have still not reached Japan yet. I don't think, uh, you know, the Yakuza are, are you know, have, have really the skill and really fully understand what's, what's going on yet right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Um, uh, sorry, let me, let me finish this straight quick. Um, so cell phones, they're, it's potentially a very lucrative area for bad guys, um, especially as many of the, of the new phones can act as credit cards. Uh, so things will probably change in the future. And then finally, uh, some lessons learned. You know, I said culture is layer nine, but if you think about it, it's really layer zero. You know, if the Japanese created the OSI model, layers one through seven would most likely have been completely different. Um, it's always good to know what works for certain cultures and what does not, especially since security is not one solution fits all. Um, people have to be aware and knowledgeable about certain issues in order to work on a global scale. Uh, so I could probably write a book about, you know, how many times the Japanese try to do business in America or Americans try to do business in Japan, but failed miserably um, solely due to the culture differences. Um, finally, the cheesy, you know, we can all learn a lot from each other. Um, this line said a lot, but unless you really go out, go out of your way to start learning from others, you probably won't realize what this means. Um, usually what one culture is poor at, another culture is great at, and what that culture is great at, the other culture is poor at. Um, so my personal advice, if possible, go abroad, you know, see what other cultures are doing better, and mimic that. Um, so I'm sorry if I went over time. Thank you very much. Uh, just, just one last thing, if anyone's interested in working, studying, research, you know, traveling to Japan and want some advice, or if you're in the area and you just want to talk, uh, contact me at kobe.ninja at gmail.com. Uh, give me feedback as well, whatever. So, so yes. your last point was that we could learn, uh, so I wonder if you could just sort of give us a quick nutshell. What, what security lesson could we learn and apply from, uh, from Japanese culture? From the Japanese culture? Ah. 
There, there are pen testers. The question is, you know, if the, if the market exists in Japan, um, it does exist. Um, just, it's probably comparable to the the U.S. market, maybe five, eight, ten years ago, is is where they are today, probably. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't answer your question. Let me, let me think about it. Um, yeah, it's a hard question. Come come talk to me after the conference or after this. Um, that's a, that's a great question. Another question. Uh, yes. Uh, for the dark sites, you said that they were restricted by IP, for cell phone IP by the Yakuza. Yeah. How are they able to discriminate between cell phone IPs and regular IPs within Japan? Uh, I'm sorry. How are they able to tell which are cell phone IPs and which ones are regular IPs? Yes. How are they able to do that? Like, is it just um, a I, I, think, I think there's a, a list of the registered um, you know, cell phone I IP addresses for um, Japanese cell phones. Is I'm, I'm not, you know, completely sure, but that's, that's what I hear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. All right, thank you very much.